see uh, you with us today. I see some folks that are visiting with us. We're glad to have you with us this morning in the house of the Lord as well. I pray that you've already felt at home uh, when you walk in the door this morning. Amen. Uh, I want to make a few announcements as we get started. Y'all know, I didn't mention this last Sunday morning, but y'all see that getting started on our, got a lot of our driveway done, and we'll be paving it as soon as this rain will settle just a little bit, and we get a break, amen. We pray for those that will be affected by this, uh, one of the hurricane yet or a tropical storm that's coming in headed towards the coast. We remember those in prayer. But also, of course, all tithes and offerings will be received at the end of the service or else we'll be standing at the door. If you've got, uh, also, you can give through our app called Tithely. You can do that as well. We'll say thank you for your faithfulness to give. Even when we were shut down a few weeks ago, you were faithfully to give uh, and mail your tithes in and, and different ways. And I want to say thank you for that, for, for your giving and continuing to keep the, the lights on, amen, and keep this ministry moving forward. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, on Sunday mornings, we've got choir practice at 9.30. Come be with us. Also, there's an adult Sunday school class going on right now. On Sunday mornings at 9.30, uh, we invite you to come out to be with us tonight. Service will be at 6 o'clock, and we also have a, a new class that's just getting started good. It's called our Foundations Class, Elementary Principles of Christ, and it, start, it starts on Sunday afternoons at 5 p.m. Sister Naomi leads that. So if you would like to be a part of that, we want to encourage you to come at 5 p.m. They are meeting in the kitchen uh, like the adult Sunday school is right now. Amen. Uh, also tonight we're going to have a, a baptism service. We have someone that's going to be getting baptized. Uh, if anyone else has been, can, you maybe you have been saved and you have never been baptized, uh, I want to encourage you to speak to me. We would love to have the honor to do that this evening. Uh, if not, uh, maybe maybe you get saved. Maybe somebody be saved this morning or saved tonight, and we'll baptize you tonight. Amen. So come to be with us tonight. We'll have church at six and the baptism. We'll follow it as well. Amen. Uh, also, there's going to be a wedding shower coming up for Will and uh, Alexis. Uh, be remembering them. They're getting married in October. Uh, they are, a, are members of our church. They are faithful servants of, of our church. I think Will's working today in Alexis. I see Alexis over there. Um, uh, they are faithful servants. They, they serve, uh, uh, they're serving three kids. They're not three kids now. They're doing the youth upstairs. They're helping Sister Nikki upstairs. Uh, work diligently uh, through Vacation Bible School and many more things. So we want to encourage you to bless them and love on them September the 11th at 11 a.m. They are registered at Amazon and at Target. Uh, so I want to ask you to honor them and to bless them as they are starting their new life together. And certainly, certainly, they'll take all the prayers that they get as well. Amen. Lift them up. Uh, lift them up in prayer. Amen. Uh, I think that's all of our announcements for this morning. Continue to remember for those that are sick, remember those that have, have been away from us, those that may be battling this COVID. Uh, many in our church had it, but praise God, they are all men being healed, and God's raising them up. Uh, so continue to pray for them as well. Amen. But let's stand up all over the house if we can this morning. Again, it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. And as we get started, we just want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's presence to come and move mightily in this place. We don't have nursery this morning. Nursery and children will remain in the sanctuary this morning. Uh, through the service, uh, we'll be starting that back very shortly. But we're glad to have you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we come before you today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be in your house this morning. Lord, we just ask that you would move in a mighty way today. Would you move in the singing and the, the worship as we lift up? And make a sacrifice of praise until you may you honor it, God, by your presence. Flooding this house today, God, may hearts be changed. May hearts, uh, lives be saved today. Father God, we just pray, God, that the word would go forth and it would find its way on a good, fertile soul, Lord. And bring great forth a harvest in our lives. We give it all to you this morning. In the name of Christ, we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 Amen.
It says that he fled and they pursued him. And they caught him and they cut off his thumbs and they cut off his big toes. And Adonai was that said, 70 kings, this is what this man said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off, used to gather straps under my table. As I have done, so God has repaid me. Then they brought him into Jerusalem and there he died. Amen. Let's stop right there and pray over the reading of God's word. Father, we come before you one more time in the house of the Lord. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity uh, to be in your house this morning. Thank you, Father, for the good singing that we've had. We pray that it's been a sweet, sweet sacrifice of praise unto you this morning. Lord, we just ask for your continued anointing upon this word. May you help me to preach it. May it come to life, God, uh, uh, for our congregation. And Father, may it encourage them to continue to fight the good fight of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask And Everybody said, amen. amen and amen. Here in the book of Judges, we see we have two tribes of the people of Israel. There were 12 tribes, and we got two of them here on the scene. We've got Judah, and we've got Simeon. And the Bible says that they came together, and they were going to fight against the Canaanites, Canaanites and the Persesites. And it was here in this particular battle that they defeated a very great enemy of the people of Israel. And the Bible says that at a place called Bezek, if I'm pronouncing that the best I can, Bezek that they killed. Grovelling here. 
here on, they once sat on a throne, but now here they are on the floor, gathering up scraps, trying to eat under this man's table. Uh, can you imagine what it would be like? They were defenseless. They no longer could fight anymore. The devil wants to make you miserable, and the devil wants to make you defenseless against his king. Let me remind you of something. That you have been saved. You are, excuse me, you have not been saved just to make it to heaven. Come on now. Come on. You, that's the reward of salvation is my heavenly home. Yes. But there's also some stuff that we can do right here on this old world before we get to heaven. So you have been saved that you might take as many people with you as possible. Yes. You have been saved that you might leave your children and your family unto the Lord. You have been saved that you might be a mighty soldier in the Lord's home. You have been saved that you might take back territory that the devil has stolen. And you have been saved that you might do as much damage to the kingdom of hell as you possibly could. You have been saved, friend. You And when you got saved, you didn't just get, well, my name got written down in heaven. But you also were inducted into the Lord's army when you got saved. Y'all don't seem too excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all might be like in Romans. Y'all be like, well, cut my son, cut my son off so I ain't got to do no fighting. Let somebody else do the fighting. I'll just sit on the sideline. There's too many Christians sitting on the sideline. Yeah. Oh, hell is raging. I come out here and remind you that there's a war going on.
wants to cut off my thumbs and my toes. What do you mean by that, Pastor? First, first of all, this Adonai Bezek, going back to this king we're talking about, the Bible says he would cut off their, the thumbs of his enemies. You know what? They would not be able to grip a sword anymore. Without thumbs, they would have a very gr a weak grip, and that sword or that weapon would easily fall from their hand. In the same manner, spiritually speaking, the devil wants to cut off your thumbs by that. What did I mean is he wants to remove your grip from the Word of God. Do you see how I'm holding this Bible this morning in my hand with these four index fingers here? Is that right? Four fingers right there. And the thumb on the other side. That is how I grip and I hold the Word of God. By saying that the devil wants to cut your thumb off, in other words, what he's wanting to do is to get your grip off of the weapon that you have been given. He wants to get your grip off of the sword of the Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 6, we hear Paul speak about the weapons of warfare. He talks about the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. Uh, the shoes shod with the gospel of peace. Uh, he talks about all of these things. He talks about the shield of faith. But that is the weapons of defense. Uh, but the one weapon of offense, uh, of fighting back, uh, was the sword of the yeah. spirit. And it, that meant the word yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. See, because the fact of it is, think about a ball game. Think about a basketball game or a football game. You cannot win either. By just simply playing defense, you got to play some offense. You sit there and you guard your, you guard the goal, you you guard the goal post all you want to, but until you've got some offense and run that ball to your own goal, amen, you're not going to win any ball games. Not only have we been given weapons to defend ourselves, I want to remind you, I got a sword in my hand. And right here that the enemies of God, my enemies, that devil and every demon in hell cannot stand against this mighty soul. Yes. But the devil wants to cut their thumbs off. Yes, he, does. he wants you to lose your grip on the word of God. Yes. He wants you, church, to let go and have a weak grip on the word of God. Of God. The enemy wants to loosen your grip on the Word of God. Listen, I believe the devil's done a very effective job of doing just this very thing in the United States of America. The devil has been very effective to take the church's grip off of the true Word of God. We are the most biblically illiterate generation since the time before the Grand Prix. We have Bibles in every language. We've got Bibles in every translation. You've got them in King James and uh, every other in, in between uh, 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 translation. Oh, I can't believe I just still can't read it. I still can't understand. How much more plain can you get? We are a biblically illiterate generation. We've taken our hand off of the Word of God and we wonder why the world is going to hell. We wonder why America's going to hell. We wonder why. Our schools are in the mess that they are today. It's because we've taken our grip off the sword of God.
separated solely from man, you are you are sorely mistaken. Amen. Amen. I believe that when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, I want you to think about it for just a moment. I don't believe we're going to go back to 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 walking on the streets of dirt and walking everywhere. I believe we're going to be so technologically advanced. I'm going to think of a place. I'm, yeah. I'm not going back to the Stone Age. I'm going to New Jerusalem. Amen. Yeah. Yeah.
true, unaltered, unadulterated Word of God. We must understand it is right here found in these pages that we learn of salvation. It's right here in these pages that we learn of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's not all that the Lord wants you to know about. Right here in these pages, we find about the power of the Holy Ghost. We find the power of forgiveness, the power of prayer, the power of the honor of God, the power of the blood, the power of speaking the name of Jesus. It is right here on the pages, black and white today. The book that I hold in my hand gives you and I spiritual power and authority against our enemy, and he wants to take it out of your hand. Colossians 3.16 says this. Listen to what it says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Do you understand what I said a minute ago about how this world is making stupid mistakes because we've got out of the word of God. When this word dwells in you, I promise you it will bring forth wisdom in you. Oh, when old Samson laid his head down in that deceit. 
Heber's lap called uh, uh, Delilah, and she cut to his hair off, and he lost his anointing, and he lost his strength. The devil loves to see a man fall. I believe that he laughed the day that David brought back sheep. That when he fell for lust and fell into adultery, the devil rejoiced as he brought her into the bedchamber and then sent her back home and then she became pregnant. He laughed when that man after God's own heart fell on his face. He loves to see men and women of God fall. And he wants to do his very best to get you to fall. He wants to do his very best to get you to fall and tripped up in the ways of this world and tripped up in sin today. Because when you fall on your face, it can take away your effectiveness to minister that God. It can take away your ability to share your testimony when you're caught up in sin, Christian. I'm sharing you this example. And I do not say this to smear him again because God has restored him and he's doing a great work. I use this as an example of how the devil loves to see a man fall. You go back to the late 80s and early 90s when, when Jimmy Swaggart was, was, was preaching, having, having uh, uh, crusades all over the place. I'm talking about thousands there. I've watched old videos of, of their church in Baton Rouge. That was full on two levels. I'm talking about people up. I mean, this is a huge church, holds thousands of people, just packed elbow to elbow in that sanctuary. And but Jimmy Swagger fell and got caught up some in some scandals in the yeah. in the early nineties and things like that. And he fell and there was a great fall before many people. And you know what? It hindered his ministry. It hindered his ability to reach the lost. It hindered his ability to preach that gospel. And because now you can go back there in that same sanctuary, but the top deck ain't full like it used to be. And it's not overflowing. And it's just not what it was. It's taken them years. It's taken them years and years even to begin to really get that ministry to really flowing. But the devil loves to see a man fall. He loves to see a Christian get caught up in sin and you fall flat on your face because it hinders your ability to take in his territory. It hinders when a Christian gets caught up in sin in the ways of the world and we fall to the end of that. It hinders your ability to reach other people for Christ and to share your testimony because you cannot testify of God's saving grace when you're down in the mud pile. Amen? The devil wants to render you defenseless, but he also wants to get you caught up in sin. He wants to get you unstable from a solid footing. Right. And he wants to get you back over in the muck and the mire where it's slippery, where there's no good footing to fight. Because he knows when you get tangled back in sin, you'll be a lot easier to knock down than when you stand in on righteousness and holiness and, and obedience in the Word of God. The devil wants to get your toes in. He wants to get your thumbs. He wants to cripple your ministry. Yes, he does. And you know what I found in that? If he can get the word of God, if he can get the word of God out of a Christian's hand, yeah. get you to really let go of that, just kind of float along. If he can get you back in sin, he can get you dabbling back in sin and caught up in sin in the muck and the mire. Do you know what, like Adam and I, Bezek, he cut off their thumbs and he cut off their, their toes. And then what he do? He chained them to the legs of his table and they ate under his table from the scratch. In other words, they have a miserable existence. A Christian that gets out of the Word of God, a Christian that gets out of fellowship with God, that gets back in sin and back in the world, you're going to have a miserable It was not for you to be defenseless. It was not for you to be back in the muck and mire of 
of sin, but Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. And I'm telling you today to pick up the Word of God, get on a solid footing, and say, Lord, I'm going to follow after you. I'm not turning to the left or the right, but I'm going to walk in obedience under your Word. And I'm telling you right now that there is more joy in serving the Lord than there is an ounce out there in that old world today. Somebody say amen. David fell in adultery. I used him for a minute ago. I told you how the devil loves to see men of God fall, women of God fall. David was miserable. Yes, he was. But he cried out. Oh, Lord, restore to me the joy. Restore that right heart with me, oh, Lord. If there's any unclean thing in me, Lord, make a clean heart in me, oh, Lord. Let me tell you something right now. You might have been a Christian. You've been got, got apathetic to the Word of God. And you've got out of the Word. You've been real lax and picking up the Bible. Maybe you're a Christian and you've got down in the world again. And you've been out in sin. Can I tell you something? All you've got to do is cry out this morning. Lord, restore a clean heart in me. Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. I want to get back in right fellowship with you. I want to get back in your Word. I want to get back in your will. I want to live for you. That is 
not where I was able to bring that sermon to, but that's where God led it to. Amen. Come back. Come back. I feel that. Come back. I feel that word. Come back in my spirit. Come back. Come back. You've got to have fellowship with God. If you've strayed, come back this morning. Stand your feet all over the house.